I think it's so important for those of us that are coming out of Babylon, for those of us that are learning how learning about Shabbat just or recently just heard of it and you want to learn and you want to keep the fourth commandment. You have now learned that the importance of the commandment, you have learned the fact that we must keep it, that it is the love of our Messiah. And keeping his commandments is abiding in his love. And so this message is for you, for you that want to learn righteousness, for you that want to keep taking from the water of life freely. This message is for all those that truly, truly want to learn righteousness. Because you have now learned that abiding in the love of our Messiah, Jehusha HaMashiach, is the keeping of his commandments and walking in it is adding oil to your lamp for the commandments is the lamp and walking and keeping the commandments is adding oil to your lamp hallelujah so I want to talk about commandment number four commandment number four that is mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 12 it says guard the day of the Shabbat to sanctify it as Yahuwah has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahuwah, Elohika. In it you shall not do any work, you nor your sons, nor your daughter, nor your manservants, nor your maidservants, nor your ox, nor your ass, nor any of your cattle, nor your strangers that is within your gates, that your manservants and maidservants may rest as well as you. And remember that you were servants in the land of Mizraim, and that Yahu Elohaika brought you out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore, Yahu Elohaika commanded you to keep the day of Shabbat. So we see the importance of keeping Shabbat, the Sabbath day. Many know it as Saturday. Shabbat is an important day to keep holy, where we do not work of any kind of labor of work. And it's a day to rest, a day to keep it holy, just like he expresses in detail he expresses, not your daughter, not your sons, you know, not your maidservants, not your maidservants. It is a day completely to just simply relax, rest, just like our Heavenly Father rested after he created everything he created. He rested on the seventh day. He rested. Some of you might say to you, but what is it that I have to do on Shabbat? Like, how do I keep it holy? Well, first of all, the most important thing is, what day is Shabbat? Shabbat is the seventh day. For all those, those of you that think that Sunday is the seventh day, that is an era of the church. Sunday is the first day of the week. So it leaves, it leaves us Saturday, which is um, Shabbat, Sabbath, and Sabbath is the day of the Father. So now that we have that clear, and we know that the day of the Father is Sabbath, Saturday, Shabbat, that is the day of the Father, we also must understand that it's also a feast of the Father. It is an appointed time of the Father, which is a holy gathering. An appointed time. A holy gathering is when you gather with other believers that are also keeping the Shabbat as you do. You can gather online or you can gather in homes. But it's a day to also gather with other believers. We also see that on this day, 
I want to read you Jubilees. Jubilee is part of the Father's scripture. Just because it's not in our main books of King James Version does not mean that we should put this aside. These books were left for the latter times where we are in and the Father is now bringing them out for us to read them. And it's bringing a lot of clarification to many things. Now, I would like to read to you Jubilee chapter 2, but I'm going to read from verse 18 onwards. And pay close attention to the detail involved when it comes to keeping the Sabbath day holy. And he gave us a great sign the Shabbat, that we should work six days, but guard the Shabbat on the seventh day from all work. And all the angels of the presence and all the angels of sanctification, these two great classes, he also bidened us to guard the Shabbat with him in heaven and on earth. I'm going to stop there. We are seeing as we're reading this that even certain groups of angels are keeping this holy day, the Sabbath day holy. How amazing is that? Let me continue. And he said unto us, Behold, I will separate unto myself a people from among all the peoples, and these shall guard the Shabbat. And I will sanctify them into myself as my people and will bless them as I have sanctified the Shabbat and do sanctify it until myself, unto myself. Even so will I bless them and they shall be my people and I will be their Elohim. That is a strong, strong, strong sentence right there. When he is describing this holy day, how he is saying that a, a group of angels, specifically the ones that are the angels of sanctification, the angel of presence, they're also keeping the Sabbath day holy. And he is saying that he will separate unto himself among all the peoples, and these shall guard the Shabbat. He is also selecting a people from among all the people. So there's a selected group from among all the people. And these shall guard the Sabbath and will sanctify them unto myself. So are you seeing the, 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 the love of the father towards his children? How he is describing how he's describing his children, like, I'm going to sanctify them. I'm going to bring them into myself, you know. He is saying, I'm going to bless them. As I have sanctified the Shabbat, listen to this. As I have sanctified this day, that Shabbat, and do sanctify it unto myself, even so, I bless them. And they shall be my people. You see the warning? And they shall be my people. And I will be their Elohim. This is a strong emphasis of who are his people. This is a strong emphasis of him pointing them out and saying, These shall be my people and I will be their, their Elohim. And I have chosen the seed of Jehakob from among all that I have seen. And I have written him down as my firstborn son and have sanctified him unto myself forever and ever. And I will teach them the Shabbat, that they may guard the Shabbat. Therefore, from all work, that they may guard it from, from all work. And thus he created therein a sign a sign in accordance with which they should guard the Shabbat with us on the seventh day. So when he says with us, he's speaking about the angels as well. 
So he is saying he's going to teach us that we may guard the Shabbat there on from, from um, Shabbat there on from all work. And thus he created therein a sign in accordance with which they should guard the Shabbat with us on the seventh day to eat and to drink and to bless him who has created all things. And he has blessed and sanctified unto himself a peculiar people above all peoples and that they should guard the Shabbat together with us. So here he's saying that on this seventh day is to eat, is to drink, is to bless our Heavenly Father who has created all things and has blessed and sanctified unto himself a peculiar people above all, all peoples and that they should guard the Shabbat together with us. And he caused his commands to, ex to ascend as sweet Savior acceptable before him all the days. There were two and twenty heads of mankind from Adam to Jacob. And two and twenty kinds of work were made unto the seventh day. This is blessed and holy, and the former also is blessed and holy. And this one serves with that one for sanctification and blessings. And to this Jacob and his seed, it was granted that they should always be the blessed and the blessed and saints of the first testimony and Torah, even as he has sanctified and blessed the Shabbat on the seventh day, he created heaven and earth and everything that he created in six days. And Elohim made the seventh day holy. Hearing this? Elohim made the seventh day holy for all his works. Therefore, he commanded on its behalf that whosoever does, does any work thereon shall die. And that he who defiles it shall surely die. Wherefore do you command the children of Israel to observe this day? That they may keep it holy and not do thereon any work and not to defile it. And it is holier than all other days. I'm going to stop right there. Just to clarify, for those of you that still say, well, I think... To me, Sunday is the seventh day. I'll just choose that day as a day of holy. You should not because you're keeping a day that is unholy to 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 kind of like bring him bring him something that is tainted. You know, you want to make sure that you do not defile his holy day. He is very clear when he is saying that on that day, is the most holiest of holiest of day that he sanctified, that he put aside for us and for the angels, for us to to bless and uh, uh, to bless him, to 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 bless him who has created all things, to eat and drink, to not work. So we can't pick and choose what day we can celebrate him and keep it holy. He gave us detailed clarification of what he expects. He gave us the exact day that he says it's holy. He even tells us in detail of what we must do on that day. So please, brothers and sisters, if you're still keeping Sunday, that is not the day of the Father. That is not the day of the Father. He is very clear that he mentioned right here, on Jubilee chapter 2, verse 27. Wherefore do you command the children of Israel to observe this day that they may keep it holy and not do thereon any work and not to defile it. You see this? Not to defile it as it is a holier than all other days. So for those of you that have said or have thought every day every day of the father is a holy day or every day of the father is you know special please heed the warnings brothers and sisters we have detailed clarification what is the father's holy day and also 
detailed information of how to keep his holy day. So let's not put on our own understanding on things. Let's not ever do that. But let's heed the warnings of our Father when he says that those that work on this day, he is describing that death. He's, I'm going to read that one. He created heaven and earth and everything that he created in six days. And Elohim made a seventh day holy for all his work, from all his work. Therefore, he commanded on its, on its behalf that whosoever does any work thereon shall die and that he who defiles it shall surely die okay now for those of you that will say but he's he gave it to israel not to us and you're thinking about gentiles you must understand brothers and sisters that once you are born again you are baptized you're filled with the holy spirit you have connected yourself to jesus christ to Yahushua HaMashiach, you see. Once you connect yourself with Him, you're now one body. You are, you are Israel. There's no longer Jew or Gentiles, you see. There's no longer a separation. Jesus brought us all together through Him. We are one in Jesus Christ. We are one in Him. There's one Torah, one law for all people. There is neither Jews nor Gentiles, brothers and sisters. We are all one in our Messiah, Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach. So we are Israel. So when he's saying, wherefore do you command the children of Israel to observe, to observe this day that they may keep it holy and not do thereon any work and not to defile it. He is speaking to all his children that are born again, that are connected to Messiah. Remember what John chapter 15 says, that in order for us to stay connected to Messiah, to abide in his love, is keeping his commandments. That is the fruit that he seeks in us, the keeping of his commandments. And so Shabbat is part of that commandments, which is commandment number four. To keep it holy is not do any work on that day. It's a day to eat and drink and to bless the Father who has created all things, you see. Hallelujah. And whosoever profanes it shall surely die. And whosoever does thereon any work, surely die eternally. That the that the children of Israel may observe this day throughout their generation and not be rooted out of the land. For it is a holy day and a blessed day. A holy day and a blessed day. The Father never mentioned any other day but this day to be holy, brothers and sisters. He never mentioned any other day but the Shabbat the Sabbath day, that many of us know it as Saturday. That was the only day that he made holy from all other days, okay? And he blessed that day. And everyone who observes it and guards the Shabbat thereon from all his work will be holy and blessed throughout all days like unto us. He is describing that those that keep the Shabbat will be holy and will also be blessed by keeping it. Commandments is righteousness. It's righteousness. Remember that when it was saying that those that do not keep it will be rooted out, it is expressing literally, guys, John chapter 15, and I know I keep bringing it up over and over, but it's because John chapter 15, it kind of like it sums it all up. It sums it because Torah equals love. The commandments of the Father equals love. If anyone will say, how do you sum up the law? 
love. It's the love of the Father for his people, you see. And so those that do not keep it do not love him. And so they will be rooted out. They will be cut off because they're not keeping his commandments. And so the Shabbat is the most holiest of holiest of days. It is a day that was blessed. And so by the people that keep it, we the people Israel, when we keep the Shabbat, we are also blessed and we are also holy by keeping it. Like it says, and everyone who observes it and guards Shabbat there, there on from all his work will be holy and blessed throughout all the days like unto us. Declare and say to the children of Israel, the Torah of this day, both that they should guard the Shabbat thereon and that they should not forsake it in the era of their hearts and that it is against the Torah to do any work thereon which is unseemly to do thereon their own pleasure, to do thereon their own pleasure. And listen to this carefully, and that they should not prepare thereon anything to be eaten or drunk, and that it is against the Torah to draw water or bring it in or take out thereon through their gates any burden which they had not prepared for themselves on the sixth day in their dwelling. This is a clarification for all of you that still weren't sure if you should cook on Shabbat. The answer to the question is no, you should not cook on Shabbat. It is a day for you to rest, to rest from all your labors. This is clarifying that we must make sure that we prepare our food on the sixth day, have our food, our food ready and prepared the day before. This because it is expressing us a burden, okay? Let me say to you in a parable, okay? There are two men, both of them labor in chef their work field is being a chef all they do for work is cooking that's that's their work position that's their title is being a chef you have one man that he prepares himself ahead of time and on the sixth day he makes sure that he has all his food ready to go so when shabbat begins he doesn't have to be in the kitchen at all now you have the other man that now the Shabbat comes in and you see him still cooking, doing the same work that he does in every other day. Which one is really resting, having a rested heart? Which one is truly having a rested heart? Is it the one that prepared ahead or is it the one that still is cooking on a day that is holy? It, is he really resting? He's not resting. So for those of you that weren't sure if cooking on Shabbat is okay or not, the answer to that question is no, you should not be cooking on Shabbat. You should not be cooking. We have detailed instruction. The Shabbat is a day to rest. It is a day for us to Rest from all, all labors is describing it as all types of labor. So we must make sure that we prepare our food ahead of time, that we get into a routine of getting it all together, getting all your food together before Shabbat begins. Again, I'm going to repeat that one. It says very clear. Listen to this. Declare and say to the children of Israel the Torah of this day, both that they should guard the Shabbat thereon, and that they should not forsake it in the era of their hearts, and that it is against the Torah, it's against the Torah, to do any work thereon, which is unseemly to do thereon their own pleasure, and that they should not prepare thereon 
anything to eat, anything to be eaten or drunk, and that it is against the Torah to draw water or bring in, bring in or take out thereon through the gates any burden. This is describing someone that has to go to a well to, to you know, grab water or take water out which they had not prepared for themselves on the sixth day. You see that? Which they have not prepared for themselves on the what? On the sixth day in their dwelling. In their dwelling. So we are called to make sure that before Shabbat begins, brothers and sisters, make sure that you prepare your meal. Prepare your two portions of meal for Friday and for Shabbat. Have it ready. Have it ready on the sixth day. Remember when the Israelite, the story when they, when manna used to fall, it did not fall on Shabbat. The only time when manna would last the next day, it will only be for when Shabbat began, they, on, on Friday, they will have the double, the double amount of, of, of manna for them to store for the next day. Every other day, they could not do that. Because if they would do that, it will get spoiled. It will turn into, into, into nothing. Th that was a lesson for them. That on that day holy is a day to rest. So even that was a huge sign. A huge sign given. Not only to them, but us, Israel. To learn from them. That on a special day like that. Is for us to make sure that we prepare our food on the sixth day. And we must keep our Father's Day holy. We must keep it holy. And make sure that we prepare ahead of time. Not to, no work, okay? No cooking on that day. Remember, remember, like the little parable I just shared with you. You have two men working, doing the same type of work field cooking one prepared ahead and rested and the other one did not who really rested who really rested because when you're cooking it's work it's a labor it's work and they shall not bring in nor take out from house to house on that day for that day is more holy and blessed than any jubilee day you see how it keeps emphasizing it is a holy day it is describing that we shouldn't be taking anything out like going outside and taking anything out and coming in listen to this and they shall not bring in nor take out from house to house on that day for that day is more holy and blessed than any jubilee day of the jubilees. On this we kept Shabbat in the heavens before it was made known to any flesh to God the Shabbat thereon in the earth. Are you hearing this? Before it was even mentioned to us, any flesh to guard the Shabbat thereon on the earth, it was already being kept in heaven. So guess what we're going to be doing in heaven, brothers and sisters? Hallelujah. We will be keeping Shabbat. Woo! Hallelujah. This, brothers and sisters, get excited. Because this is, this is, this is, this is our family. This, this is our kingdom. You know, this is our kingdom. We must learn it. Because this is the thing that we will be doing in heaven. Okay, brothers and sisters, listen, on this we kept Shabbat in the heavens before it was even made known to any flesh to guard the Shabbat thereon on the earth. When we keep Shabbat, angels are keeping Shabbat as well, brothers and sisters. How amazing is that? You know, such is such a beautiful thing. And the creator of all things blessed it. But he did not sanctify all people and nations. He did not sanctify all peoples and nations to guard the Shabbat thereon. But Israel alone. Israel alone. 
Them alone he permitted to eat and drink and to guard the Shabbat thereon on the earth. And the creator of all things blessed this day, which he had created for blessings and holiness and glory above all days. This Torah and testimony was given to the children of Israel as a Torah forever unto their generations. Brothers and sisters, heed this beautiful warning. The love of our Father is written all over this. His love to his people. He chose us above all people. Israel, Israel. We are Israel brothers and sisters. Those that have chosen Jesus Christ. Those that have been born again in baptism. As Jesus says, in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must be born of water and of the spirit. Being baptized being filled with the Holy Spirit. That's how you connect into his covenant, into his promise of love, you see. That's how you connect with him. And to love him, to abide in his love, is keeping his commandments. As he said to us, if you love me, keep my commandments. I wanted to share this with you. So now you know how to keep Shabbat. Now you know what day is Shabbat which is Saturday, Sabbath, Shabbat. It is the most holiest of holiest of days. Now you know that it's only one day of the week that the Father sanctified, that the Father called holy. One day of the week, he called it holy. And it was Shabbat, the Sabbath. Now we know that even the angels a certain groups of angels were also selected to keep the Shabbat. And we also know and understand that from all people, the Father selected Israel, Israel, to keep Shabbat, to keep this holy day, to keep his holy day. For us to drink, to eat, to bless him to bless our creator who created all things. He says that those that keep it will be holy and will be blessed as this day is also holy and is blessed. So brothers and sisters, now you understand as well that on this day is a day not to cook, but to prepare ahead of time on the sixth day to make sure that we make our meal, to make it on the sixth day. We also have a warning for, for Israel, for those that are not keeping his day holy and they're defiling it. He the warnings that is written there. He the warnings. It's the same similar warning that is written in John 15. If you haven't had a chance to read it, definitely read John 15 when it speaks about those that do not keep his commandments. They will be cut off, tossed, and burned. So heed the warnings, brothers and sisters. The commandments of the Father was given to us in love. Let's abide in his love, brothers and sisters. Let's abide. The Father wants to bless us. He wants to sanctify us. He wants to make us holy. He wants to make us pure. How beautiful is it? Hallelujah. Now, let's talk about when the Shabbat begins. Many of you have had a little bit of, of issues with regards to if it's a full all day uh, Saturday or, you know, Shabbat begins on the evening of Friday. The evening on Friday when the sun goes down, that's when it truly is Saturday on the Father's calendar. The sun was given to us as a sign for days. The world, brothers and sisters, has corrupted many things, even to the point of uh, corrupting even the, the ways of how we see time, the way how we view the months, the way how we view the hours of the day. Remember that there was a moment on the story of Lazarus 
There was a moment that Jesus said, don't you know there's 12 hours in a day? He didn't say 24 hours. He said, don't you know there's 12 hours in the day? When he was speaking about the day, 12 hours in the day and there's 12 hours in the night. So we see that when the father describes a day, a day is when the, when the, sun, when the sun comes down and it's evening and that's when the day ends. And it, the next day begins because the sun went to sleep. And now the next day begins from there, from there on. So let me give you an example. If it's Friday right now today, and now the sun is setting on Friday and it's evening, that means that now the day has ended and now truly Saturday has begun. That is the reason why Shabbat is evening to evening. And we have a, a scripture that speaks regarding this when the people were keeping um, a feast. Listen to this. This is in Leviticus 23 verse 32. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls. This is a feast that they're celebrating and the Father is saying, you're going to do this like if this was a Sabbath, a Sabbath of rest. But he is speaking to them in detail where he says, from evening unto evening, you shall celebrate your Sabbath. He is talking about evening to evening. During that period, that is Shabbat, brothers and sisters. When the sun has gone down on Friday, and the sun goes down on Saturday. That period of time, that is Shabbat. That is the Sabbath day. Okay? That is the Sabbath day. So for those of you that were still a little bit like, but what day is it? Shabbat is beginning Friday at sunset, at evening. And it ends on Saturday on the Sabbath, on the sunset, okay? That is Shabbat. Because you must understand that the calendar of the Father is not the same as the world. We must already have that understanding that the world has corrupted many things, trying to hide the truth, okay? The Father's bringing the truth out. He wants His children to know His ways, His truth, so they are not defiling his true day his holy day so you're not tainting it okay so you're not working on that day that you're supposed to keep holy you know that you're not working at nighttime and evening on friday evening when it's when the shabbat had begun and you know and and thinking oh it's it's, it's from saturday on until the nighttime the day for the father is literally that every single time the sun goes down, like how we say, oh, the day ended, it truly ended. When we look at the sun, everyone is kind of already done with work. When the sun goes down, the day have ended and the next day begins in the Father's calendar. The next day has started. In the world, it still continues like it's still that day. But in the Father's calendar, the day has ended. The, the next day has begun. Again, if it's Friday today and it has gotten evening, evening arrived, the sunset, it has set. The sun went down, the next day has started. So in reality, Friday evening, Friday has ended. Saturday has begun. When a sun drops on Saturday, Shabbat ended. Okay, it ends on when Saturday evening. That's when Shabbat ends. So, so for those of you that were unsure regarding to when does it start and when does it end, is from Friday sunset, which is also evening, to Saturday at sunset. Okay. Remember. In Numbers 15, chapter, verse 15 through 16, one law is for you of the assembly and for the strangers whom sojourns with you, a law forever throughout your generation. As you 
are so is the stranger before Yahuwah. One Torah and one right ruling is for you and for the stranger who sojourns with you. So basically it's saying one Torah for all. One Torah for all. Hallelujah. The Deuteronomy 6 verse 25 it says, And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Jehovah, our Elohim, as he hath commanded us. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 through 5, it says, And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that says, I know him and keep not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso, but whoso keeps his word, in him verily is the love of Elohim perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. So again, those that says that they know him, but they do not keep the commandments, they do not know him. They're, they're, they're liars. They Basically, that's what it's saying. That's basically what it's saying. He that says, I know him, keeps but keeps not his commandment, is a liar. Okay? Again, the Father showing the importance of keeping his commandments. It says in Isaiah 26, verse 2, Open you the gates that the righteous nation which keeps the truth, the commandments, may enter in. Hallelujah. Psalms 119 verse 142, it says, Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law, the commandments, is the truth. So we see here that the righteousness and the everlasting righteousness, we see again that when we keep His commandments, brothers and sisters, is righteousness is abiding in the love of our Messiah. So let's abide in his love. Let's learn to truly keep his Sabbath day holy, the proper way, how he wants us to keep it. How he wants us to keep it. Hallelujah. This was placed in my heart to share with you guys that this must be mentioned. Many questions. I... I try to post on the community page as much as I can regarding the Shabbat with many verses. So for those of you that want to go ahead, go to my community page, look at the all the all the all the verses there. I'll try to also link it at the bottom on the description box and put as many as it allows me to so you can also see it and read it for yourself. But please brothers and sisters Let's abide in our Father's love. Let's learn His ways. Let's walk and abide in His love. Okay? No more work. Let's not defile His holy day. Let's heed the warnings when He says that those that are working on His day, He is speaking to His people, Israel. Working on His day, He is speaking regards of death. Being cut off. Same thing that is spoken in John 15. Those that do not keep the commandments will be cut off. So let's heed the warnings, brothers. Now you know the day, the holy day of the Father. Now you know what you must do on this holy day, which is not labor of any kind of work and no cooking. It is a day to eat, to, to, to drink. It is a day to, to bless the Father. It's a day to, to, to glorify Him. To be thankful of all the creation that he has done. Of, you know, to, to, to bless him. That he created all things. Keep in mind that we won't be the only one keeping Shabbat. Even the angels in heavens are keeping it. A selected ones also was selected in heaven just like he selected us. Isn't that amazing? Ooh, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. As it is in heaven. It shall be on earth. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let his will be done. Heaven and earth. My goodness. He selected a selected group in heaven. From all the groups of all kinds of angels, brothers and sisters. He selected two groups of angels. To keep his holy day from all the people on the earth he selected a group of people a peculiar people 
to keep this day. Not everyone were selected, but Israel, Israel, we, his people, Israel, those that are connected to our Messiah, those that are connected to Messiah, Jehusha HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, we've been selected. We are Israel, and we've been called to keep the Sabbath day holy, to keep his commandments, brothers and sisters. For there is no longer Jew or Gentiles, you see, there is no longer Jews or Gentiles, for we are all one in our beloved Messiah, Jehusha HaMashiach, you see. So let's abide in his love. Let's learn his commandments and continue to purify ourselves in this walk of faith. Hallelujah. May Elohim bless you.